video will highlight the construction of a large grade stabilization structure. On this site, stormwater runoff from over 1,100 acres was causing a serious erosion issue in the crop field and creating a huge gully where the runoff entered the nearby stream. To solve these problems, the landowner decided to construct a grassed waterway to convey the runoff through the field without losing any more soil and place a grade stabilization structure at the end of the waterway to provide a stable outlet. Because of the large drop-off from the field to the stream, a six-foot overfall structure was needed. One of the main reasons that the landowner selected a metal tow wall style structure is because of its efficiency. The structure will handle a large amount of runoff without taking up too much space in the crop field. It was decided to try this new design, a whaler tieback system to anchor the aluminum drop structure. The new design used whale beams and dead man anchor plates for extra support for the structure's head walls, helping to reinforce the walls during a large runoff event. This video follows the construction of the first whaler tieback structure in Illinois. Construction begins with excavating the hole. Although only a small portion of the structure will be visible once completed, a sizable hole is required to construct the structure. As with most projects, things don't always go smoothly. To get to a stable elevation, we often set the bottom of our grade stabilization structures below grade. Here, water is seeping into the hole at the level of the adjacent creek. Pumping is critical to keep the hole dry enough for construction. As you can see, excavating a trench for the structure's footings proves to be a challenge. A granular base is used for the foundation of the structure. With a firm foundation in place, the aluminum pieces that would form the weir part of the structure are positioned and bolted together. To prevent leakage, mastic is placed between the joints of each panel before bolting. While part of the crew is making sure that the top of the weir is level, the concrete forms are being constructed in the trench. Now it's time to start assembling the head walls these are bolted in place, similar to the way the weir sections were assembled. The trench is too full of water, so the pumping rate is increased. Rebar is installed to add strength to the concrete pad and footings. The pumper truck has arrived. We're ready to pump concrete into the forms. There's still too much water in the trench. Notice how water is being forced out of the bottom of the form as the concrete is pumped in. Workers pull the concrete into position in the form, making sure the material is evenly placed. Workers hold the form wall in place while placing the concrete. The form is long and concrete is heavy. Concrete is needed in the splash pad area of the structure as well as the footings. Once in place, the concrete surface is leveled off and smoothed. While the concrete cures, Workers place a cap on the head wall, securing it with mastic and bolts. A whaler is installed across the middle of the head wall. The anchor rods that connect to the dead man anchor plates will connect here. At this point, more excavation needs to happen to make room for the tiebacks to be constructed. Elevations are checked often throughout the project. More coarse aggregate is brought to the site. It will be needed for the drain fill behind the structure. Before any fill is placed, the weep holes are drilled. A screen is placed over the weep holes to allow water to flow easily without taking back fill with it. The dead men are then connected to the anchor rods. Water seepage has been a real issue throughout this project. Some pumps will now run all night so workers can finish filling in the rock. Geotextile fabric was installed then CA6 put in place and compacted over the fabric, working carefully around the dead men and anchor rods. Time to bring out the jumping jack. We pay special attention to compaction around the dead men because this is what is going to be keeping the entire structure from collapsing due to the pressure of the soil. Careful now, those dead men need to be placed at just the right angle. As the structure was constructed, 
work on the grassed waterway continued simultaneously. Fabric placed between rock and soil prevents mixing. Placement and compaction of rock continues in lifts until it reaches one and a half foot from the top of the weir. At this point, more geotextile fabric is placed and the backfill process begins. Larger riprap, RR4, is placed around the weir opening and the headwalls to protect this area from high velocity flow. All of the support structure disappears below ground as soil is backfilled over the rock. As workers move earth around the structure, the channel is opened from the drainage ditch and the water flows in. We now have a new stabilized path for storm water to flow into the ditch. The next step is to grade the area to create the dam, which will direct water into the structure and blend to the elevation of the grassed waterway. The auxiliary spillways are shaped. Now it's time to finish the earthwork for the grassed waterway. After a lot of hard work, effort, and pumping of water, the structure is completed. This completes the installation and grading for the structure. The farmer plants a temporary seeding of cereal rye. A permanent seeding will be completed in the spring. Several weeks later, a rainstorm came through. The waterway and structure worked just as planned. 